Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I am Dr. Paul Dye. Welcome to Bridges Live. And I am with my, another one of my beautiful um, guests that's going to come on and talk about what she's been doing, what they've been doing. But ultimately, I always like to start off a show and say I like to do three things. I like to always give information, understanding, and action. I think when people hear things, I think then they don't understand it. And if they don't understand it, then they're unable to put it into an action. So if we're able to hear things and say, man, I wish I could. And I wonder if I could. And I didn't know that was going on. Then hopefully they too can put themselves into what you call an actionable, intentional, purposeful life. So thank you to Kia for coming on the Bridges Live with Dr. Paul. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me today. So um, I don't do introductions because I think introductions, I've, I've said this for so many years, I think it sounds like a baseball announcement, like in the next batter up and it just seems so, uh, I don't think it's, I, I think it's, I don't think it's authentic. I think people can talk about themselves. I think people can say, hey, this is who I am. And then we can get right into the show. So please introduce yourself to Bridges Live. Okay. So I'm Takia Chase Smith. I'm an author of Pendulum of a Mother's Love and Forgiveness, Making Peace with Your Past. I am also an Army veteran, a wife, and a mother of three. So, you know, I hope people hear things clearly. Making peace with your past, also a mother and also a veteran. That's a lot, right? Yeah. You know, because some people live so in retrospect. They they live through the, the, the experiences they've been through and they keep repeating the same thing over. Yes. And, and I think, is that what your book is about? Yes. So um, making peace... Forgiveness, making peace with your past is based on that you live, you know, like you were just saying, you live in a cycle repeatedly until you're able to forgive and let go. So when you're making peace with your past, it, I don't say to forget your past and, you know, move on, but just forgive the person who harmed you. Forget the person who may have hurt you, the one that, um, you know, stopped you from being able to live your gen your true genuine self. Now, you know, I've, 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 I've worked with several people and even myself, <laughs> we're always working on ourselves, right? What happens, you know, I think when I hear men and specifically women, what happens if it's violent? How do you, how do you forgive that? You, like you say, you don't forget it, but I think that's the difficult part of the forgiveness. And, and if you don't, and we know, I mean, I know scientifically and emotionally, if you don't forgive it, it you just keep repeating the chemical cycle that's in your body but so how, how how is that coachable for people when they're still stuck in that whole it was so painful so harmful especially when it comes to violence and or violence not just physical but mentally spiritually so, something that's always attacking you mm -hmm. so i said when you're trying to forgive someone who physically harmed you in some type of way mm -hmm. is to write it down to relive the story first because when you're you know, when you accept what was that happened to you and you're able to relive it, whether you're writing it down or you're out, you are more able to say, okay, this is what happened. Um, I forgive myself for, you know, for the experience that I went through and then I forgive them for harming me. A lot of people that are hurt, hurt other people. So it may have just been a cycle that they were going through. Um, if, you know, if your mom was beat on by your stepfather or your father and you as a male or another person as a even as a woman you kind of repeat those things because you think that that is what's supposed to happen so not that well some people are just genuinely mean and they mean to do what they're doing <laughs> some people they don't they just thought that that's what they were supposed to do I, so I, I don't think people are generally mean i think i think i really stems from they just haven't that little juggernaut they just haven't forgiven something and and so it, it keeps perpetrating that anger or that hostility i i don't think people are generally mean i would hate i really I, I try like my 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 passion is people just can work better if they understood more and i think that's why i always go for information understanding because if you are me and someone just points it on like man you know what deep dr paul you you're kind of a, mm, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Listen to that. And then try to say, how come? 
right? And can I work on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree there. Yeah, because some um, it's a blind spot that some people have where you don't know what it is that you're doing. So if someone brings it to your attention and says, hey, you know this, then yeah, it's like one of the blind spots that you may have had and you're able to address it and identify with the problem or the, the root of the problem was. So let's take us through the book. How come you you just started writing and you're like, you know, let me put this down. So I went through a lot of traumas in my life. And because of my traumas, my husband, my relationship with my spouse, my husband was very, very, um, it was rough. It was patchy. And I kept on trying to figure out why, like, why do I feel this way sometimes? Why do I get so angry with him? And sometimes he hasn't done anything. Sometimes he does stuff. But a lot of times he hasn't done anything. And I'm angry with him. And I'm hurt. But I was carrying a lot of baggage with me. I was carrying assault with me. Um, I was, you know, carrying in lies and betrayal and cheating with me. And so with all of the baggage that I had, it was, it was just like a bomb. So it was just a tick, 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 boom. And I would explode. And I couldn't figure out why. So when I started to write down, like, okay, this hurt me and I'm still hurt behind it. This this happened to me and I'm still hurt behind it. Then I was able to place some of those feelings and identify, okay, this is still stemming from this relationship or this hurt or this trauma. So I was like, okay, if it's still in me and it's been, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, imagine who else is still carrying around this baggage and this weight with them. And you can't heal that way. You can't, you know, go and say, okay, well, I'm moving on. And I'm going to be happy and I'm going to get married or engaged. And you're still holding on to it because at the end of the day, it's a ticking time bomb. It's going to tick, tick, boom. And you're going to be like trying to figure out why it happened or how you can change it. You can't change it until you've made forgiveness. You've accepted it and made forgiveness um, in those situations. I, I'm going to give your husband kudos for sticking it out. Thank be you. Because as a person that maybe have gone through this, they're like, is it's not so much, is this worth it? Can I continue going through this, feeling the pain I'm feeling, even though I might even know my partner spouse is going through stuff. I don't know if I can handle this. So to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here until it gets worked out. What? So let me ask you this. It was, you know, we've heard and we've seen the stories. We read the books. We've seen the movies when the abusive spouse says, I am sorry and I'll change, but it doesn't change. Do you think there's a time limit for that to say, okay, I gave you this time and, and nothing's changed, so, so I'm out, deuces. I don't think that it's a time limit on it per se. I think that maybe if you go through some coaching or some counseling, okay. perhaps first, then that will be better than saying, okay, you have six months to figure out your crap and get it together or I'm out of here. Because again, when you're going through things or you don't even know what's why there is so much baggage and so much anger it's hard to put a time limit on it. It's hard to put a, a date and a number on it. Right. But if you right. have a counseling session and you are able to identify those things, then you have time to say, okay, I understand why I'm going through this now. Let me, uh, let me change it myself. Or you walk through changing it with me mm -hmm. instead of saying that, hey, I'm out deuces. It is, is the counseling session or a mediator or however people want to, whoever they want to go to, is that a key component of staying or is that a key component of it being worked out? It being worked out. Okay. Yeah. Cause you can't, once you do the counseling, it doesn't necessarily make you stay. You may find out more and be like, you know, I, I didn't know that there was so much back there. And I can't really deal with some of what you experienced or went through because at the end of the day, you may one day, you know, it may pop up in your head again and you may be angrier than I expected. And some people just can't live with your past. They're like, you know, I, I know that, that about you. And if I had have known that about you, then maybe, you know, the course of our actions and our relationship would have went a different way. So do you, so in your book, do you think people work backwards? Like, like I, I love this person 
let me work on myself? Or is it, I'm working on myself and I want to love? What, do you find a, a better way to go either way? I, I think it's just best to start where you are. Okay. Yeah. So some people, it's better to say, you know, because at the end of the day, you need to love yourself first. You can't really put love into someone else until you love yourself. And a lot of us don't know how to love ourselves because we don't know ourselves. Um, I jumped in a relationship when I was 17 years old. I was with that person for like four years. And then I jumped in another relationship and I've been in that relationship since then. Well, no, I had a relationship from 14 to 17 and then a relationship from 17 until now. Mm -hmm. And so I never really got to know myself. So it was hard for me to love myself as an individual person because I didn't know what that was. I was a mother and then a, a, a long-term girlfriend and then a wife. So I never knew what Takia was or who Takia was. So when I learned who I was and accepted who I am today, then I'm able to love and put effort in loving my husband the way that he should be loved. What, what's some of the same, because you do coaching too, correct? Correct. So there are some questions I know I get and the things I do, it, it keeps coming up like the same question. What's some of those few questions that comes up so often you're like, let me answer this if you can. Oh, ooh, let me think. Like, why? Why did this happen to me? I get that question a lot. Why did this happen to me? Why did they harm me? Um, it's always a why. And then how do you forget that? A lot of people are like, how, if you tell me to forgive him or forgive <laughs> him, how am I supposed to do that? Like, why am I supposed to do that? Like, I don't understand. Like, are you tripping? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> When you forgive them, you're able to let it go. The whole purpose is to let it go and to move on. You holding harbor, you holding a grudge against them or hatred in your heart against them. A lot of times they they may have forgotten what they did to you or they, you know, they were like, Dad, you know, I'm sorry that I did that to her, but they didn't never come to you and say, hey, I'm sorry. So you are still living with it in your heart and you're not able to move on. When you say, okay, I'm going to forgive this this person for this action, whether he, you know, sexually assaulted me, he beat me, he um, he cheated on me or she cheated on me or she beat me or she abused me, I'm willing to say I forgive them. And then you can say, okay, today I'm moving forward. I'm writing in my journal. Mm. I'm reading a book. I'm trying to figure out what's next for me. And so those are some of the questions that I get asked a lot. Do you, do you, what do you, do you like the journaling idea? I love the journaling idea. I love the journaling idea. I love it. I love the journaling. But I like the journaling idea actually being read the day after to myself. Okay. So I'll write because I believe you should just write. Stop thinking. Just write. And I think that's the subconscious releasing itself. And and to, and to and I use the write with the opposite hand, your dominant hand, to work on the conscious self. Okay. Because when we write with our our dominant hand, it's so fluid, right? Blah, 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 right? It's like writing right. pain. But when you write with the non-dominant hand, there's a thinking process of not just how you're writing, but what you're writing. So I do that exercises with myself and with other clients and stuff too. I said, so how do you feel about that? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I said, well, I want you to write with your non-dominant hand and write down what you think you feel about it. Because it's such a thought process of the words you want to spell and how you want to write it. It slows you so down that it puts you into the action now state. Yes, I love that. I've yeah. never heard of it being done that way, but I love that. Yes, that's powerful. So I, I love that, you know, because I've been sexually molested when I was a young boy and I and I was abused that way. So I know when I was going through a lot of my trauma and PTSD, I had to work on, you know, the suicidal thoughts, the the, the molestation and then finding out, like, am, am I worthy to even be a person to be a person? Right. So there's a lot of exercise that and it doesn't go away. That's the one thing you said. You don't forget it. There's a constant working on it. There's a constant. I know for me, I have to be so cognitive of what am I working on and what's that trigger? Like, oh, yes. what's what's that feeling? That reminds me and like, oh, I know it reminds me. I understand it. I acknowledge it, but I'm moving forward. 
I'm not forgetting you, but I'm moving forward. How does that work for you? Did that come out in your book too? No, so that did not come out in um, Forgiveness, Make a Peace with Your Past. But yes, that is absolutely the truth. Um, yeah, so I couldn't agree with you more on that point right there. And, oh God, look, that, that was like a trigger. Okay. But yes, so when you're working on so your So that was a trigger, what I said. Yeah, some of it was because um, when you're, you know, when you're saying that, hey, look, I was molested or something like that, it just bottles up and it's like, whew, right. you gotta take fresh air um, to, to move past that part. But okay. yes, yes, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I got this. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Yes, we are. And I, and I don't know if we talk about this enough. We don't, because you, you're taught to, you know, forget it, move past it, don't talk about it. Like, I know as a child, there were certain things that you couldn't say. Mm -hmm. You couldn't really talk about what happened to you or what was going on in the household. So you just learned to say, okay, just carry it with me. Just put it, put it here and, you know, act like it never happened before. So... We definitely don't talk about it enough in our communities. We need to do more of that. We need to do more of, like you said, journaling and writing it down and even um, coaching, mentoring, you know, something to talk about what it is to just actually say that it happened because a lot of people, again, they don't speak on it. They just like, okay, you know, I was molested or I was sexually assaulted. I was raped and that's it. And they just go on with life angry and they're going through life, you know, mad, hurt, with all these different emotions. And when you ask them, like, why why do you feel that way all the time? Why are you always angry? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of times they don't know because they put it in the back of their head. And they're like, or oh, some people live with it. And they go through it every day. They see a person that looks like them or a person that sounds like them or have their characters and traits. And they're right. like, I can't deal with this. I can't do it it's a trigger for them. And a lot of times they can't even identify why it's a trigger. It, and smells. Most people, you know, smells the largest trigger for most people because it's the, it's the strongest sensory scent that, it, that affects the brain is smells. If, if you were in a situation where a person was not, in my situation was the person was an alcoholic. So certain smells of liquor triggers the thought. And I was nine eight and i'm in my mid 50s 55 and and still the same alcohol smell triggers it it's and you got to be like oh wow it's bringing me you know 40 plus years back into the incident and you're and and, it, and there's a sinking feeling and you're trying to be present in you're probably in a libation period of some friends and whatever or an outing and you're like whoosh like a big wave you're like okay let's get back here and i think that bottling down isn't healthy i think allowing yourself to be okay i understand i feel i'm moving forward i'm okay i think those that phrase is key i understand i recognize i'm okay yes 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 once you can get those you know those three down those three things down and you're journaling to like when you get home from that experience you can mm -hmm. journal like this is how i felt this is what i was doing to make me feel that way okay now i've identified it so when it happens again you already know like okay let me you know take a few seconds let me you know remember where i am let me ground myself using your grounding techniques do you think it's helpful if you're with your partner spouse your the person you're with to mention it then and there if you can, so I, I think that it will be it will be healthy. Whether it's probably hard to do so, um, to just be like, hey, you know, this happened. I know for me, it was that was really hard to do when I first, um, you know, got with my husband because he didn't really know what was going on. I just right. told him a few years ago, like maybe two or three years ago, and so he still he still had problems adapting to it because one of the people that assaulted me he knew mm. and so he was just like why you know why didn't you ever tell me and so he's going through his own emotions with it as well 
So it's kind of difficult to bring it up to him because then he's, you know, he feels like, okay, I, I kind of let you down because you, or I let him down because I didn't tell him. And then he let me down because he didn't do anything about it, but he didn't know what had happened or transpired or went on. So I kind of just keep it to myself a little bit or talk to a coach or, you know, write it down in my journal because I don't want to bring up more feelings for him because he hasn't to this point today. I don't think that he's forgiven for it. So I don't want to kind of trigger him as well when I'm going through it. I, I actually recently wrote an article about men who've been through traumatic experiences, whether it be whatever abuse, molestation, something like that. And I think more men without really dealing with it goes through what you call emotional erectile dysfunction. I think so many people think that erectile dysfunction is something physical and it can be mm -hmm. right. But I think has the emotional part been looked at prior to the physical part. And I don't think men automatically they go right to the physical like oh it's health or food it, it you know hormonal type things but mm -hmm. your mind controls a lot of that and if that's not worked out you're going to always have and i actually think it's damaging if you get medication that helps you with erectile dysfunction and you're not dealing with the emotion you actually could be suppressing it even further because you feel like, oh, look, I solved this problem medicationally, but I didn't solve this emotionally. So it must have been medication, but it really was always emotional. Do you think that happens for women too? Yes. Yes. Because when you're like in the moment or you're having a relationship and you can't figure out like some things you're like, okay, I got to block this out my head mm -hmm. in order to, you know, be able to perform. And it's very difficult. And then, you know, you don't understand it at first and then they don't understand it. And then when you're, you know, working on, you know, getting like playing with other stuff or any extra stuff to your relationship to try to make it work. And you can't figure out like why it's not working sometimes or sometimes it works and you're like, okay, naturally, I just want to be able to be satisfied <laughs> or to satisfy you and you can't. So, yes, I definitely think it works um, in both um, male and female. So I think it's a blessing you wrote the book. You gotta, you gotta get past your past. Yes. What's some of those, what's some of that, um, when your favorite parts of the book you want to talk about? I think my favorite part of the book is where I say that you have to, I like, you know, you have to identify. I don't want people to say that they're forgetting mm -hmm. the action or whatever it is that they're forgiving. But just to forgive so that you can move on. Life mm -hmm. is so much better once you forget, once you've forgiven someone, once you forgave them and you're you're building a better you. When you're walking around like, okay, I, I have a clean slate, you know, I'm happy. Things, I mean, things are still going to be difficult some days, but overall it's, it's better. You, you feel more comfortable. You're able to communicate with your partner. You're able to communicate with your children, your family, because everybody, it plays a role in every in your life all the way around. Every relationship is affected by it. So once you're starting to forgive and you're like, Pusa, okay. And you're, you know, you're like, I can do this. I've moved past this and I'm on the upper up and up. Things are looking great. Like your friendships are a lot better because you're mm. communicating them and you're in a better space. I have uh, people who listen to my shows and you, but I have nine children and, and seven girls and two boys. And we've always been open about the things I've been through. And it just helps him understand and, and, and let them know this is what dad went through. This is what mom went through. This is what, who we are, because I always wanted that open communication with them as they would with me. And I, do you, do you find that helps with your children as all as you is now that you're communicating with them about what, what mom been through or what whoever been through it's it's more of an open communication that way so i have been open and honest with my oldest son with my middle son he knows a little bit he knows that mommy has ptsd he knows that there are certain things that mommy can't handle um and you can't do with mommy and my daughter is the same way because i typically don't allow her to go out like i i shelter them a little bit 
Mm. And so I have to tell them bits and pieces. I don't think that they're ready because my youngest is 11 years old. Okay, okay. So the hard truth with her sometimes frightens her. And I don't, she's already kind of sheltered from me sheltering her. Like, hey, no, you can't go spend the night at this person's house. No, who's over there? No, you can't go spend the night at that person's house. So she's kind of like, and then we talked about um, sex trafficking a few weeks ago and she couldn't handle it. Like, she was like, okay, everywhere you go, you need a weapon. And she was like arming me up <laughs> as if I was poor every day. So I haven't told her everything that has happened to me or my experiences. I just tell them like, okay, certain things mommy can't do. Certain things mommy aren't isn't comfortable with. And, you know, you just right now have to be in that space where you understand when mommy says no. I'm not comfortable with that, that you kind of like your understanding to that. And you like, okay, you know, mommy said, no, I, I can't do this. There's a reason behind it, but you know, I'm probably not ready to hear that reason. Um, with my oldest son, I spoke to him. I told him, I wrote him a letter and my husband a letter a few years ago. And I broke down everything that had happened to me. And I, they, you know, I was like, if y'all have questions, we can sit down, we can have a conversation about it. And of course, at first they were both angry. And so they was like, no, I don't want to talk. Like, why didn't you tell me this? Why didn't you tell me that? And I'm like, okay, the same way you're feeling now, mm. it, I feel just about every day. So right, it's, it's right. the process that, how do you think it makes me feel? And then I have mental health um, that I live with. I have PTSD from being in the military. So there's a lot of stuff that I carry around with me. And I don't want to bury my, you know, my things on them, my past yeah. on them. Then they'll have to learn how to forgive for my stuff too, my infraction that would happen to me. And I don't want them to deal with that at such a young age. So I haven't communicated all those pieces to them. Yeah, but it, I so I understand the process and we're going to talk more about that process. Where can people get your book? Because we're going to do this again, but where can people get your book and how can they contact you? So my book is on Amazon. It's an ebook, so it's, you can download it right from Amazon. You can email me or... Um, call me. I'm on Linktree. So as Takia Chase Smith, T A K I A C H A T A yeah T A K I A C H A S E Smith S M I T H on Linktree. So you can find my all of my social media handles there. Um, my cell phone number is on there as well. So you can call or text, or you can text me first. So I know how to identify who it is that's calling me. But you can call me. Um, you can write me on, like I said, on my social media channels and say, Hey, Takia, you know I just want to talk to you about this or that. And I am very open and willing to talk to anyone. Um, and I would appreciate it, you know, if they reached out to me. I, I just want to say congratulations, not just the book. It's about you coming, getting stronger every day. And, and, and people who are listening, hear this download, whenever they hear this, I want also want you to know that I am proud of the people who are moving forward and not staying still because and and ask for help because we can't do this alone and that's one of the things Takia has said said we need to get help right we need to share this we need to stop holding this in because it ruins so many lives not just our own but the people who we who we want to love who we would like to love or who, or maybe the future love we haven't met yet you know whatever that is it, it will block all that if we are unable to express ourselves so don't be silent. You're not alone. And I hope people understand that they too can be forward. Anything you want to say to the people? Yes. Um, you close it out very well. So I just want to say thank you, you know, um, and yes, let it move past it. Um, forgive for yourself. You're not forgiven for someone else's love or forgiveness for, you know, you're not forgiven for them. You're forgiven for yourself. Right. So just put in mind, um, and, and talk about it. Thank you, everyone. Listen to Bridges Live. I'm Dr. Paul Dyer. You'll also listen to Kia Chase Smith with um, the pendulum of a mother's love. You know, um, so be kind, be compassionate, be safe, and be purposeful. Thank you. And everyone have a great night, great morning, great day.